Hello friends, thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel today. It gives me great joy to introduce to my viewers Evan White. Evan and I became friends this past year as we journeyed through our first year as students at George W. Truett Theological Seminary. In this video, Evan shares what led him to ministry and seminary, the impact basketball has had on his life, and the wonderful experiences he has had as a youth pastor of Park Lake Drive Baptist Church in Waco. So without further ado, here's my interview with Evan White. All right, we are here with my good friend Evan White. We are both in, uh, just finished our first year of seminary, and it is a pleasure as always to get to chat with you and talk with you. So welcome, Evan. Uh, if you, you would, introduce yourself to the viewers so they can get a little sense of who you are. Well, well, my name's, like Joshua said, my name's Evan White. I am um, a student at Truett Seminary at Baylor University. Like you said, I just finished my first year in my master's. Real proud of myself with that. I am also a youth pastor at Park Lake Drive Baptist Church here in Waco, Texas. Um, and um, yeah, that's mainly all the important things about me. And um, I'm just excited to be here. Um, and if you would share with us uh, what led you to pursue ministry and how specifically did you arrive at Truett? Um, this, it was, this is really kind of a testimony. Um, after my, um, in 2000, the last year, last year, so 2019, uh, I was just kind of lost. I was trying to figure out God had a bigger purpose for me. And then I was still playing semi-pro basketball and, but I had a, had a feeling that it was bigger than basketball. I had, my purpose was bigger than just basketball. So, um, at my church, Resurrection Baptist Church in San Antonio, we did a 40 days of prayer and I did a 40 days with, I did that plus fasting for 40 days. So I did no social media for 40 days, which that was really hard, but, uh, had, was no social media to find out. And during the last, during the 40 days, it was so hard because, like, I still can't find it. But that last week, God gave me a vision about coming to be a counselor, but a different counselor to be a spiritual counselor and a spiritual coach. Um, I suffered through depression, suicidal thoughts, and everything throughout my college and after college as well. I still suffered through that. And I want to help people go through, um, I want to help people counsel people through depression um, encourage them, help you be their best selves through God. So um, at first I just wanted to go just to be in counseling, but God showed me another route um, to go. So I'm getting both my master of divinity and my master, master of social work. So after I'm done, I'll be a counselor, maybe start my own practice. I don't know yet. Um, but the long run is to be a counselor and spiritual coach for, um, for others around, um, around where I'm at or around the world and do the best I can. So yeah, that's um, how I got to Truett was, um, I have a friend, uh, my mentor, uh, still my mentor today in San Antonio, he graduated from Truett. So I know about Truett, I know Truett is like one of the best seminaries in the South. And um, God told me just send, God told me just to send my, um, you know, ap apply uh, my application just to Truett. My, well, she's my wife now, but my girlfriend at the time, she wanted me to, and my mom wanted me to try different seminaries but god just told me just true it and i just did true it and i was nervous because like i didn't have the best gpa like i had like a 2.8 2.7 for my um undergrad at oklahoma city university so you know going at baylor you know i thought like i'm not going to get this and all that and everything but god have a way and show me that true was the one i got accepted and that was just a sign that I must keep going and go through this. And yeah, so this is how I got to true it. I'm excited. I make great people and great opportunity. So what has been your uh, favorite part about your first year at seminary? It's just one. Well, of course, I, my my um, my relationship with guys is much greater now. So that's also the most important. But I guess other than that, is really the people, um, the people at Truett, uh, especially, you know, meeting you, but, um, and just all different types of people and different types of backgrounds, learning from them, what they think of God and, 
and bonding them because when I because when I graduate and, be, and become a counselor, I want to learn. I want to help many people, even with different religions. Like if it's Catholic, I want to. How do they think? I know we're at Baptist, but soon I'm learning on different religions as well, just to know the background. So I know how to approach people, how to still respect and love them through that time. But just different type of people, different type. I think just knowing people and bond we have. And yeah, I think that's just the one thing um, and just the friendship I have at Truett. And I think I ha I'm making long-term friends um, after we graduate. So I can't wait for how we gonna keep growing through this, through this experience. Now, you did mention earlier uh, that you've played basketball throughout your life. So mm -hmm. how has basketball been meaningful to you and what lessons about your faith in God have you learned from those experiences? Uh, a lot. <laughs> um, so about past, um, basketball was just my escape. Um, of course, I was when I was like literally born in my dad's arm, he gave me a basketball. My dad already knew. I was going to play basketball. So I've been loving basketball since I was a kid. But um, I've just been through, uh, suffered through a lot. Uh, my parents are divorced, got divorced when I was in second grade. And it was tough, but basketball helped me to escape that. God, um, God showed me, especially the death of my godfather, which is like a father figure to me. Um, passed away when I was in fifth grade, but it was just a way to talk to him. Um, I do use basketball to meditate especially my workouts. I remember I had a workout with my dad and I just put on like any menu, but like I felt it was just, I was working hard, sweating and all that. And I was of course focused on my work, but it was just really, I felt like I was talking to God. It was another way to talk to God. Me and God have many conversations in during workouts, even in the game. Um, and um I don't know, it was just a way to talk to him. I still use basketball workouts today, even though I don't play basketball now. I still used to use basketball. It taught me patience. It taught me how hard work pays off. Um, because I only had one scholarship. I only had one school was looked at me. I had to try out for it. And I worked hard. Um, it just showed me that hard work pays off. Patience and a way to talk to them. I had many conversations. I was angry with God in my workout. Like I was cussing him and all that. I think if I think when you have that relationship with God for a while, you have them conversations. That's why I believe like no one's perfect. And like, that's what I feel like. But it taught me to grow, meditate, and that know that hard work does pays off. And without basketball, I won't be the man I am today. So I'm always blessed with basketball. So now, uh, as you're going to seminary, you're also the uh, youth pastor at Park Lake Drive Baptist Church in Waco. And so what has that experience been like for you? And what impactful lessons have you learned along the way being the youth pastor? Challenging. <laughs> uh, when I say challenging, uh, I did not go into seminary to be a youth pastor. That's the one thing. How I got the job was um, um, I got, a, I got, accept, I got a, uh, you know, accepted and there was like, are you looking for a job? Um, the truest say you're looking for a job i said well yeah i need to pay my bills so anything to work for and he said are you interested in being a youth pastor at first i was going to say no but they said but my spirit told me to say yes and i said like it's not official just go say yes and that's when pastor um, amos is his name the pastor at park lake drive um called me saying yes i'm looking for a youth pastor you seen he saw my uh, resume and all that and got the interview the interview was supposed to be like a 20 minute interview but it lasts for an hour and 30 because we were just talking and he just and I got the job right on the spot and so I was really nervous never been a youth pastor never taught I taught vacation Bible school last year and that was a great experience but being a youth pastor was just difficult and I had a struggle for the first few weeks I still didn't know how I like to teach the class and all that everything but then I went to transformation conference and with Michael Todd and I was able to ask a question out of all many people I was able to ask him a personal question while we were in the stadium and I asked just some tips on how being I'm a new youth pastor and all that I explained how some tips and the four things he told me I still use it for everything today is one be real tell on yourself 
don't judge, love them first. And with them four keys, I have grown as a, one, grown as a person, to teach, be able to help others on my youth and grow them as well. And just learn more about myself, how my purpose means even more because of them four tips. So after them four tips, um, with the help of my pastor and many others, they showed me how to teach. They showed me how to introduce the youth, interact with them. I relate to the youth because one, I'm still, I'm, I'm getting old, but I'm still young. I'm still, I still know what's hot. I still understand what all they're going through. So it, it just came easy after that. Not easy, not easy. That's the wrong word, but it just came natural. Just going to work, knowing that this is my purpose. I know my purpose in the future is not being a youth pastor, but you never know when God be like, well, nah, this is it. Because I didn't know I was going to be a youth pastor. But just my purpose now is being a youth pastor and getting school done and helping. I'm helping souls. I'm helping growing their, even if they're doing great, it's still my job to make sure they're still in that path and just be their best selves, being their best selves every day as best as they can. And it's actually helping me to be helping my future purpose of becoming a counselor because I still talk with them. I still interact with them. I still got to check up on them. And it's still helping me to do that. So just in four things, if y'all didn't get anything from this, it's just be real. Tell on yourself, don't judge, love them first. So that was amazing. How has your role as a youth pastor changed in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of uh, social distancing and self-quarantining and all that? Uh, are you able to find ways to connect with your youth virtually? Um, it's been a challenge. It really have been. I think it's been a challenge for every church, especially uh, um, trying new ways, especially with Zoom, um, online church and all that. So it's just been difficult. All my youth do not have cell phones, so I don't have all their numbers and all that. I try to do like, we were doing a series called Relationship Goals with Michael Todd, and I tried to do a YouTube watch party and that was kind of difficult still. Uh, me and my wife did um, Godgrams where we did like funny videos and still put a lesson there. And we did those for a while and then we kind of stopped because of school and all that, everything. It was just, um, she, she was, um, a, the school she's at gave her a lot of work in the end because of this coronavirus. So she was busy with that. Um, but I, I still interact with my youth. I still, I'm in a group chat, made a group chat with all the numbers I have and say, just pop a question like, how are y'all? Majority, I just get, yeah, we're good. And that's really just it. But at least I know they're okay. Um, I just try, I'm trying my best. I'm, we're meeting um, June 7th is when we come back to the church and we're being very cautious and everything. We're just not like having a regular church. Um, like we're not even having a congregation singing. Like the only person singing is the worship leader. That's it because you want to bring all that spit and all that. So, um, so, but I'm just happy I'm able to see everybody still. Hope they're good and everything. I just miss being in person. I'm not a fan of this. <laughs> But um, it's been challenging, uh, creative, help me be more creative. I have more ideas in the future now. And just help me get plans, ideas for the future for my youth. So I'm excited what the future holds. How else have you occupied your time during this pandemic? School. <laughs> other, than, but other than school, uh, I spent a lot of time with my wife. Um, just that's that's one important thing. I think we are been watching four series already. We did Ozark. We just finished what we're about. We're on Avatar now, but we did Greenleaf. We just finished Greenleaf last week. That was a good show. And um, massing. We just been watching a lot of Ben shows. Um, but other than that, spend time with my wife. Spend time with my mom. Uh, my mom. I was like I said, I was in San Antonio, so I did visit my mom sometimes. Um, so just spending time with family. Um, grow that. I think that was important. I think this pandemic helped me grow our relationship with my wife. Um, I, am, I have been calling. I am starting on a book. Um, I am going to, I don't know the title yet, but I know um, I'm using the book of Proverbs. I believe the book of Proverbs has helped me as a man to become more wisdom and to become the man God wants you to be. So um, my dad told me that when I was 
in middle school. He told me for a whole month uh, because the book of Proverbs have 31 chapters. So that's what was the whole, so most, you know, some months, half of the months are 31 days. So he said, for the whole month, I want you to read a chapter a day in Proverbs and help that use a tool. And I actually did that and it helped me. And then I got lost, but I came back and did the whole thing again and helped me. And I want to write a book on the book of Proverbs. Um, I'm taking my time on it. I'm not rushing it. So next Monday, I'm actually going to start reading Proverbs. It's taking my own notes. And then I'm taking Christian scriptures to this semester um, in the fall semester so and that be how the book of proverbs and so i would learn more depth from a professor what other people think of it take them notes and then 2021 i will actually start writing the book so um, i'm excited proverbs have helped me become a man and i like it how it's set up um to be yourself and learn what god has in wisdom and then in verse 31 is about, about, you know, finding a woman. You know, everyone say I'm looking for my Proverbs 31 wife or something like that. But you got to go through Proverbs 1 through 30 before you go 31st. So finding your true self. And that's what I had to do before I met, even before I met Crystal. I didn't talk no girls or none like that. I worked on myself. I loved myself. It was hard. But after that, I finally found, um, you know, I finally found myself to find my wife now. and. I'm still growing. I'm still definitely learning, but um, I think it's time to write this book. So it gave me the courage to start this book. And my mom always told me that you're going to write a book one day. And I was like, no, but now I'm about to start writing a book. So that's the main thing. So I know that you're also in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, you're in the gaming world. So yeah. do you want to tell viewers anything about that? Um, yeah, so this is just something fun. Um, I've always been a gamer since I was in middle school. Man, now how the gaming world is now so big and tense today, like even now they're giving scholarships to gaming. I said, man, if only this was back when I was like a serious, serious gamer. But uh, through the pandemic, um, I've been playing a lot of uh, the game called Apex Legends. I've been playing, that's one of my favorite games. And this funny thing, I wasn't really into shooting games and all that but i just love how you have to think um use your teammates and it reminds me of being basketball because <laughs> uh, you know i don't play basketball i am planning on maybe going back to basketball but you know i just miss the you know the teammates and rob thinking ahead and all that everything and the game does help me to do that and i just like you know what why not start streaming you know it's like me just playing video i play video games but now i help people i interact with people I have a mixer with be it'll be on this description below. Um, you know, I try to make I did make it more I made more Christian based, but people know who I am. It helps spread the word, but also I I just want people to be themselves and have fun. I did have a few chats with other people, and it was just fun just interacting with them and grow from there. I am using my Instagram to send videos of my clips, and it's just fun. It's just something to do because you know, been watching Netflix does get you know kind of tiring for a while so i've been doing that and it's actually been going well so if you can follow and hope you have fun awesome so as we uh, close out this interview is there anything in particular you want viewers to be in prayer for hmm. just not really just for me just for people just people that need the prayer you know, I'm, I'm blessed that, you know, um, I'm still getting paid, you know, I'm blessed and God still provide here. Um, and, um, it was hard for my mental health. It was been hard. So I guess you pray for my mental health, but other than that, just pray for others. I know people are going through a lot through this situation and that's what I'm really cautious, cautious about. So stay prayer, um, stay in your spiritual life. I know it's hard. It's been hard for me because I'm more like the people person, like, what influenced my spirit is being interacting with people, seeing people. And it's hard for me for my spiritual life, but I learned how you have to stay strong in the word. I got me a new devotion book that had been helping me a lot. And just pray for other spiritual health as mental health as well through this tough time. Awesome. So would you like to uh, join me as we close in prayer? Oh, yes. 
Uh, gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together to gather virtually and to fellowship with one another, uh, to get each other's insights on life. And I'm just, I'm so blessed uh, with knowing Evan and I'm looking forward to everything you have in store for him. I ask that you be with Evan, uh, that you be with his family, that you encourage them, that you uplift them in every way possible, and that you remind them that you are always there, that you love them, that you care for them, uh, that you go before them, and that you are with them, God. I just ask that you be with all of us as we journey throughout this pandemic, be with those who are struggling financially, those who are struggling health-wise, and uh, for whatever reason uh, else they're struggling in all of this, I just ask that you be with them, that you remind them once again that you are there for them and that you love them so much. Uh, we lift everyone on our prayer lists up to you, God. Um, I know this is a challenging time, and we take comfort in knowing that you are there for us, that you love us, and uh, Thank you for everything that you're doing for us, everything that you will do. Uh, you are amazing, and we love you so much. And it's in all of these things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much, Evan. Oh, well, uh, thank you. Bro. Interview. Uh, it has been encouraging, as always, getting to chat with you. So uh, take care, uh, be blessed, and stay awesome. You too, man. All right. Thank you, Evan, for taking the time to do this interview. And thank you to my viewers for tuning in today. May the peace of Christ be with you today and stay awesome.